Okay, so we are continuing our Football Club History Series. We're looking at Sligo Rovers Football Club. Uh, now, they play at the Showgrounds, has a capacity of 5,500. Uh, they're founded in 1928. Uh, they joined the League of Ireland in 1934. But now let's get into the real interesting facts about this club. They are supporter-owned through a cooperative. Um, in it's the people, basically, the people of Sligo, I think the surrounding county, um, basically our owners have a share in the club. Uh, they have a lot of supporters' trusts, but the Bitto Red... Uh, Supporters Trust is the most well-known, raising a lot of funds for the club through various fundraising efforts. Uh, all that's all over and above uh, match day income, merchandise sales, and obviously the TV rights being distributed. So outside of you know, your other income streams, the Supporters Trust do do some fundraising activities as it is a supporter-owned club, and that's a rarity. And that's a very positive rarity. I, I, I like where... I like the German 50 plus one rule. I know there's a few other clubs floating around in England and Scotland that are supporter owned or through supporter trusts. Exeter City is a prime example. Now, most famous player to play for Sligo Rovers is the late great Dixie Dean of Everton fame. 1939, he signed for the club towards the end of the 38-39 season, played seven matches, scored 10 goals, ends up with an FAI Cup runners-up medal. So uh, they went on a bit of a cup run to the final, and he ends up with a, a runners-up medal. Um, that medal was ultimately stolen, uh, but was returned to the club uh, not long before. I think not long after Dixie Dean passed away, it was actually returned to the club. Dixie Dean would return uh, to some games in 1978, shortly before he passed away. Now, Dixie Dean, I've got to do a video on his career. Uh, started out at Tranmere Rovers, goes to Everton, ends up at Notts County, and then ends up at Sligo Rovers towards the end of his career before signing for Ashton up in Greater Manchester. So, a pretty... Well, when I say pretty scary player to defend against, you look at his goals per game ratio, it is ridiculous. Um, many modern players would want that goals per game um, ratio, uh, really. And at a time when you think about the pitches he's playing on, which are just mud baths with heavy leather balls, with really basically World War One, World War Two style army boots with studs in the bottom, you would imagine Dixie Dean playing today with that kind of kind of finishing touch. I mean, Christ, with the modern tech we have today, uh, God knows how many uh, goals he would have scored. Now, just after Dixie Dean plays. For Sligo, the emergency in in Ireland, which is World War Two everywhere else, but the Irish government called it the emergency, and the Irish press called it the emergency. Uh, in 1939, World War Two breaks out. Sligo Rovers pull out of the League of Ireland for financial reasons because the war it's not going to be financially viable, and a lot of young working age Irish men go across the border into Northern Ireland uh, because the Republic, which was known as the Irish Free State at the time, is neutral. They go across the border into Northern Ireland and they volunteer for the British Armed Forces to fight against Nazi Germany and fascist Italy. And that's a lot of working age people in a very rural part of Ireland where there's, at that time, low incomes, high unemployment. They've just gone across the border and signed up for, for the Allied war effort. Um, and it's not financially viable uh, at that time for Sligo to continue playing. Plus the showgrounds needed some, some investment as well. They didn't have enough money to upgrade the stadium, so they withdraw from the league. Now, they try and reapply and rejoin a few times. They're finally re-admitted in 1948. However, they only stay in the league until 1962. At that time, in the 61-62 season, it was a 12-team league. The league, the FAI, wanted to reduce it to 10. They reduced it to 10. So Sligo and a team called Transport. Yes, there are some really weird football club names out there, not just in Eastern Europe, but even in Western Europe, uh, are thrown out the league. They're told we're restricting. You guys have had terrible seasons. You're at the bottom of the league. We're getting rid of you. We're contracting. Uh, they have lodged an appeal with the FAI. But the following year, the league is re-expanded to 12 teams, so they rejoin anyway. So, yeah, they've had some battles with the FAI over their existence as well when they uh, they left and come back and left and come back. But that hasn't stopped them winning a lot of trophies recently. In fact, they've got a great history, a uh, great history. Uh, they've got a fair bit of silverware and they're very, one of the most successful clubs outside of Dublin. Most of the silverware in Ireland is in, in football is, is in Dublin. But there are a few clubs outside Dublin that win a lot. Sligo in recent times have been pretty successful in the 2010s. They, they've won a fair few trophies in the 2010s to add to their existing success they had prior to that. So they've won three league titles, five cup titles and two league cup titles. So they're reasonably successful and their success isn't in one period, it, it's throughout their history. So their league titles they've won in three different decades over many, many years, over 
Oh, there's a pen there. Uh, so they first win in the 36-37 season. That's their first league title. That's before World War Two, And that's before Dixie Dean joins the club. They win again in the 76-77 season. That's after being readmitted to the league for the third time. And they win it for the third and final time in the 2012 season. So it's been 12 seasons since they, they won the league title. Now, the FAI Cup. Uh, they've won five times, more successful in that competition. It's been 11 seasons since they've won the FAI Cup, but they won three uh, cups in you know uh, in, in the 2010s in a four-year spell. So three out of the four finals they won, so that's not bad going. But they first win it in the 82-83 season, then the 93-94 season, and then their recent run, 2010, 2011, and 2013. So as I say, it's been a little while since they've been successful, but they've had success in recent years. Uh, the League of Ireland Cup, they've won only the twice in the 97-98 season and in 2010 where they do a cup double. And that's very hard to do. It's very, very hard to do to do a cup double. But from 2010 to 2013, they had a lot of trophies in those in those four seasons. Um, they won one, two, three, four, five trophies uh, in that time. So a very successful spell at the early of the early 2010s. Uh, winning a trophy, a minimum of trophy every season. There was one season they did a double. And so there we go. There's a brief history of Sligo Rovers. Fantastic fact that Dixie Dean played for the club. And I will have to do a career video on Dixie Dean because that's going to be a hell of a lot of fun um, looking at players of yesteryear. Now, Dixie Dean died before I was born, but uh, he's still a legendary figure. That league season scoring record... That doesn't include his cup games as well. He scored a lot. I think he scored over 70 goals that season if you include the, the cup games as well. Ha Harlan didn't come close. People saying Harlan's going to do it. Didn't. No. Still a record. And that's when you're playing more games per season as well in the league. So and that's on real. No subs. Some games you would end up with like nine players on the pitch because the guy's broken his leg. There's no substitutions. It's a mud bath. Dixie Dean, if he was playing today, would I think be better than Ronaldo and Messi. Personally. But there we go. I'm going to leave that there. Thank you very, very much for watching. That's a brief history of Sligo Rovers Football Club. Uh, I will have some more content for you guys very, very soon. But from me for now, thank you very much for watching. And it is goodbye for now.